two heads are better than one. What has two eyes, a mouth, and wrinkly green skin? Mark shrunken head. It's a present from his Aunt Benna. A gift from the jungle island of Baladora. Mark can't wait to show the kids at school his shrunken head. It's so... ugly. So... gross. So awesome. But late one night the head starts to glow. Because it's no ordinary head. It gives Mark a strange power. A magical power. A dangerous power. Welcome back to Goosebumps Overviews, the show where we talk about Goosebump books and judge them on their merit. Tonight's episode is book number 39, How I Got My Shrunken Head. Let's see how many sex jokes I'm not going to make. The cover is one of the more iconic covers of the series, but really it's rather generic. It does the same thing that the last book did with the composition of the head being really contrasted by the items in this kid's room. It's not your typical 12-year-old uh, thing that you would see in a 12-year-old's room. If it weren't for the design of the head, this cover would be completely forgettable. And I really like that. Unfortunately, I'd have to say that the cover is a tad bit misleading, just because it makes me think, when I was looking at this, that the book was going to take place mostly in side a house it it does not at all <laughs> i think we're only in the house for like eight chapters before things get real so without further ado it's an okay cover let's get into the story mark loves the jungle mark is so obsessed with the jungle he constantly plays this video game called jungle king the name was so generic that I completely forgot what it was called. There's a lot of generic things in this. Mark also has this fascination with a word called Kalia, which he'll often say throughout this story. So Mark gets a present from his Aunt Benna, a shrunken head. One day, while playing a few rounds of Jungle King, He's introduced to one of Aunt Benna's colleagues, uh, Carolyn Hollings, who gives him this gift, and then later on explains that Aunt Benna wants to meet Mark in the jungle island of Balladora. See, Aunt Benna is some sort of archaeologist getting really invested in the culture of uh, Balladora, and that's what the head comes from. And Aunt Benna supposedly wants Mark to come there. But when he does arrive, Aunt Benna is gone. Missing. And there's something strange about the head, too. While at his home, one night, Mark notices that the head starts floating. Green glowing eyes. And it smiles. As if it's alive. Of course nobody believes Mark. I mean, who would, right? So you might be wondering, why would a bunch of people that work with Aunt Benna want their kid to come here? You want to know why? Do you really want to know? Apparently, Mark has jungle magic. What is jungle magic? Jungle magic. That's a really generic name, Stein. Come on, come on. I mean, seriously, jungle magic? <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. We're in for a good story here. So Mark meets the rest of the science team. Uh, the Hollings. Dick Hollings. <laughs> Carolyn Hollings. And their daughter, Kareen? Karen? I think it's Kareen. Weird-ass name. Soon, Mark discovers that Dick Hollings 
is hauling some melts besides dicks, and he's got some plans for Aunt Benna. So yeah, uh, the scientists are the bad guys. Mark tries running away so he could find Aunt Benna, and he's joined by Kareen Hollings, who convinces him that she's on his side. She's not! Mark, come on. Come on, Mark. So the story kind of falls into the same uh, category as Deep Trouble did, where it's more of an action-adventure that you would find in something around the lines of Indiana Jones, rather than a typical Goosebumps book. While normally I praise changes, this one just kind of felt... Well, reflect on my Deep Trouble review, and you'll understand. However, I feel like this book is a lot more interesting than Deep Trouble. Because Deep Trouble, I had to force myself to read that one because I was just so bored. No scares in that one, but there are some scares in this one. Quicksand, red ants, and there's a tiger scene at one point. That gets pretty crazy. And then he finds his Aunt Benna, and then things with the Hollings family get a little out of control. But then the third act happens, and it's a race to the finish, and I don't care. And, oh yeah, there's a dark twist ending, too. So, you know, follows those tropes all really well. Yeah. I was not entirely impressed with this book. Just overall, it felt like a race to the finish. A rushed climax, if you will. But, still better than Deep Trouble. Thank God. Yeah, there's a lot of horrors with the jungle, and I would say the best parts is when Mark is on his own in the jungle, and I guess when he finally discovers that the Hollings are evil, I guess that's kind of an interesting uh, segment there when he has to escape from the camp. But everything else, I couldn't care less about, really. Spoilers, here we go. Okay. Spoilers, 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 um, yeah, it uh, turns out Kareen was, betrays Mark when he finds Aunt Benna, and Aunt Benna and Mark are captured by the Hollings family, and they're like, Tell us the secret of jungle magic, or we'll shrink your nephew's head. Which, um, you know, they try to, I, I guess, yeah, head shrinking doesn't work like that, guys, you don't... You can't do it uh, to a person while they're still alive, as far as I know. You gotta, you know, remove the skin from the head, dump it in boiling water, do a bunch of shit with sand. I don't know. I'm not an expert on shrinking heads, but I think you're doing it wrong. Uh, but uh, by some uh, miracle with the jungle magic bullshit, uh, the hobblings get shrunk, and then we never really hear from them again. Uh, Aunt Benna takes the jungle magic back. Everything's wrapped up real nicely. And then, the dark ending happens. Is it really a dark ending, though? I'm not really so sure about that one. Also, kind of a dick move, taking back the jungle magic. He's ha he just figured out that he had it, and now it's gone. Yeah, great present, Aunt Benna. Jesus. But anyway, he's taking the shrunken head to school. And he's gonna tell all his friends this fantastical story that they'll totally believe but then the head glows green and says let me tell the part about the tiger then the book ends so uh it's better than deep trouble like i've said and uh five out of ten five out of ten yeah yeah it has significant more scares it's not completely on the ocean I feel like the characters, like the villains, are a little bit more developed and have a little bit more of a goal than uh, what Deep Trouble had. That like, a, well, more of a goal that's more like, ethically dubious. Whereas in Deep Trouble, they were just trying to, there was just a dude trying to make money, I guess. I don't even remember because it was so lackluster. But one thing that the Shrunken Head does way better than all the other books is that it has so many sex puns in it. Way better than Billy flopping around in the ocean. I'm comparing this a lot to Deep Trouble, aren't I? Anyway, guys, that has been my review of Deep Trouble. 
excuse me, I mean how I got my shrunken head. I know what you're thinking. I'm not I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna make a sex joke out of it. I'm not gonna make a sex joke. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you'll stay tuned for next episode when we cover Night of the Living Dummy 3. Have a scary day.